This movie is the final one in our section of working with our frog animation for this 22nd segment that's part of a larger animation. In the last movie, we had a little bit of a problem with geometry on our yellow car. And I'll have to tell you, one of the most exciting things in all animation is that every now and then, you introduce your own artifacts, your own problems into an animation. I created some issue in there, and I am not sure what it was. Somehow I didn't grab all the points, or I inadvertently moved some points on that layer when I had a tool selected. I have no idea what I did. But the way I fixed that was simply to delete the yellow car layer and re-import that, and then apply the action again at the 11 second point. So what that has done for us is that as the camera pulls back, we get our car coming through here, except that it looks like a car now instead of a uh, UFO. So if we take this all the way back to the beginning, advance to frame one, we'll go ahead and play the animation inside of Anime Studio Pro right now. We get our frog and he starts looking. We get him a little bit twitchy like he wants to do something. Again, this is being backed up by sound effects, but here come the cars. He's looking ahead and, and one goes by and then we hear more. And as the camera starts to pull back, now we're suddenly confronted with every vehicle known to man driving in front of our frog, making it look near impossible to get across. And that's just what we wanted to do. So we've got that set up, the motion's fine. We can continue doing a little bit of finesse if we want. As is always wise, we can go ahead and render out at certain points in our timeline to make sure that it looks the way we want it to. I have not added any motion blur to our project yet. So that as we get down here towards the 22nd point, this is where the, you would make the determination whether motion blurs are going to help or hinder your file. In this case, I don't know that I would put it in, which is why I didn't include it with the original ones. It's a decision you need to make on the actual animation section itself. If we do a quick render out now, we'll see that we get this nice blurring of the hills and the grass up front, but the cars come in very sharp as they should be, but they're coming by so fast that yeah, you don't really see them. I would need to play with this a little bit more and will actually for the assignment to see if we should add some motion blur in there. Now, getting to rendering, the next most important part of getting your animation out is that we've got quite a few special effects in here, actually, in terms of layer effects. This will tax Anime Studio Pro's capability to render some of these items correctly. Let me go ahead and re-render this one right here. The cars, as well as the frog, we know. We have quite a few special effects going on. We've got some gradients going up here, and somehow our tree bark turned to green with a gradient in there, which is why we always proof it this way. I can go back in and change that, and I will. The file that is available in the working files will have the brown gradient that was intended for that. However, here's the gotchas when rendering with animate with high degrees of special effects like this. You can animate or render out to a movie or an AVI format. Usually that's problematic for anime because for some reason it seems to run out of memory on very complex type of special effects assignments. So it's always best to render to sequenced files. So let me go ahead and do a quick save. I'll come back in and change those tree trunks. But when you go to render here, instead of choosing the default animation output, which will, which will either be QuickTime or AVI depending on which platform you're on, Choose something like PSD or JPEG and work with those. Each image of the animation will be output into a file. So if the animation quits for some reason around frame 257, you don't need to re-render those first 257 frames. You simply use the start frame of 258. So it's another safeguard that keeps you from having to do your work over and over again. Additionally, if you haven't had any exposure to the video environment or working with editors, more often than not, they actually request sequenced files. And the reason for that is that they can do special effects afterwards. There's many things. And again, applying some of the mats that you might want to modify with another program, the alpha mats that is, modify with Photoshop. The best way to do that is going to be with sequenced files. So that is kind of the standard when you're working in a production environment. With that, we've concluded this segment of our tutorial series. We have looked at how to create the frog, how to animate that, apply those special effects, do a little character development, 
and how to get it back out of the computer into a format that's useful for video editors. Our next section will take a very quick look at some of the cool features that Animate lets you use in our next project.